What is up guys, this is Silver Warrior here, and today what I wanted to discuss is something that yes, I am a little bit late to getting um, on, but what it is is obviously, as you can tell from the title, is the uh, US debt clock uh, silver and gold prices truly accurate? So a lot of people were, you know, kind of freaking out about this in the silver community. I mean, it was a really big deal because what it basically exposed is that, you know, for every ounce of silver that's currently available, there is about 835 US dollars, I believe, and, you know, at the, available at the same time. And there's like, you know, 12,000 US dollars available for every um, ounce of gold. So, first of all, one thing to notice is that what this obviously means is that, you know, the uh, ratio for silver to gold, first of all, is being exposed by this. The silver to gold ratio in terms of price versus availability is exposed by this little uh, factor right here. And therefore, obviously, that is one thing that makes me tend to trust it at least a little bit more because I've always known that there's about anywhere from 10 to 14 ounces of silver for every ounce of gold that's available, yet the price ratio is way off from that. You know, it goes anywhere from 1 to 60 to 1 to 80 throughout the past uh, few centuries, that's where it's been, which obviously does show price manipulation. And I do know prices are manipulated below there, but is the U.S. debt clock really showing us a truly accurate representation of what silver and gold prices should be? Now, one thing that you kind of have to consider is not only how much silver is available and how much gold is available, you know, for, or with any precious metal really, but I believe U.S. debt clock only shows silver and gold as as of now, as of when I last checked today. I don't know if that's going to change any time in the future, but, um, you know, what you have to consider is not only what the uh, silver to dollar ratio and gold to dollar ratio in terms of availability right now is, but the other thing is, you have to look at how fast silver is being used, put in, you know, how much fast more silver is being put in, and same with gold, and how fast dollars are being put into circulation. So, what I'm saying here is that, basically, you don't just have to consider, you know, how much is available right now to figure out what the price should be, but also the consumption rates of both silver and gold, and the, um, you know, additive rates of the dollar. Now, as you probably do know, most of the dollars being produced today aren't being completely new, you know, dollars put into circulation. Around, I believe, 95% of all dollars put into circulation today are old dollars that are being redone, you know, old dollars that are being reprinted. So, a lot of the dollars are being taken out of circulation and put back in. So, Basically, you just have to look at how many dollars are added in a year, let's say, compared to how much silver and gold is lost in a year. Because I do believe that, as of now, silver is being consumed a lot faster than it's being put in, you know, it's being mined, I should say. You know, for every ounce of silver that's being mined, there's several ounces being used. And that's because of industrial uses and bullion and things like that as well, and people hoarding it. But a lot of it is because it's lost to industry, so... You to figure out what the value really should be, I don't know if you should just base it on the immediate availability because of the fact that, for one, there are a lot of U.S. dollars right now that can't, that simply can't be spent. Not every U.S. dollar is available for spending. So I think that's one thing that has to be considered. Another thing is that a lot of silver and gold isn't available to be sold. A lot of it that is being mined is being put in the Federal Reserve, and a lot of it is never going to be in the U.S. There's a lot of silver being put into... Uh, external countries, you know, not just in the U.S., because the U.S. debt clock, obviously, is basing it on the United States currency. So there's a lot of silver that's being mined every year that's not never going to be in the United States. It's going to be in other people's reserves, or it's just going to be used for industry and lost forever. So I really think that to figure out the true price, you'd have to look at just how much is being consumed, how much is being uh, mined, and how much of it's just never going to be available again. I mean, I guess that goes with consumption anyway, so... You know, it's kind of saying the same thing twice there, but anyway, I do hope you enjoy the quick video, and that is it for this one. And just to let you know, I don't have anything against the U.S. Deck Clock. I do think it's very interesting what they show. I just think that there's a few more things that might need to go into it, but that's just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section below. And that is really it for this one now. Peace, love.
much respect.